We're here at the 5G Transport and Network Strategies event in New York City. Uh, one of the sponsors of the event is Ericsson, and David from Ericsson is here with me right now. Hi, David. How are you? Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, for sponsoring the event, and also thanks for joining me for this interview. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Ericsson. So uh, I'm the CTO and head of strategy in the customer unit for Verizon. Okay. So in my day job, I work solely with Verizon, making sure we do everything we can to keep them ahead and invest in the market. That's that's a pretty focused uh, job, but a but a pretty expansive one, I can imagine as well, because Verizon's huge and they have a huge 5G network all, all over uh, 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 the U.S. Um, so I guess that the, a logical question would be, can you give us uh, an idea of what the uh, impact has been on the transport network from the advent of 5G, especially as uh, as it relates to uh, Verizon's rollout? Sure. So when it comes to 5G, we see uh, a real need to focus on end user performance when we think about how to design the transport network. Um, so for us, new architectures like centralizing the RAN or the evolution to cloud RAN bring different impacts that we've got to consider. The most important thing is to work this as an end-to-end -end process and make sure that if you keep end user performance and network performance and getting the maximum return on investment from the 5G build out, uh, front of mind, then that can help you make the right decisions when it comes to transport. Okay. So, you know, for example, when we think about the evolution to cloud RAN, virtualizing the baseband and introducing VDUs in the network, there's a ton of legacy radio equipment that's right. going to live long in the network for years to come that needs to be integrated and handled. So it brings into focus new solutions like a front hall gateway that we've got to you know, use now as a new tool to, mm -hmm. to get Cloud RAN to perform well. Yeah, that's what I appreciate about the whole process is that it's not done in a vacuum. So the new technology comes along, it's definitely, we see a need for it in the market, but it has to go somewhere. And of course, if, if it's going into a network, that means something else has to either move around or be replaced or, you know, and it all has to integrate together. So I do appreciate what a, what a difficult <laughs> job this is. Um, one of the things that came up in the conference is um, the discussion of, you know, kind of getting that timing right between uh, the, the advent of the, uh, you know, of, of 5G in general, but also just how the radio network advances a little bit, the transport network advances a little bit. Um, uh, how do you keep those two uh, harmonious and in, in, in line as, as, as the technologies are, are soaring ahead? We tend to work on multi-year planning cycles. So the intent is that we're looking at these things together, factoring in the time it takes either for new technologies to come in or deployment time and, and cycle time as well. I mean, the obvious one when it comes to 5G introduction that is really the starting point is by adding all this new 5G spectrum into the network, be it on high band, millimeter wave, or, or mid band, which is C band here in the US, mm -hmm. that additional front end capacity is going to drive massive uptick in traffic. So, just the sheer capacity impacts alone are, are kind of the things that we have, I guess, more experience with planning for because it's kind of a known quantity. You know, we've got models and techniques that we can use to, to forecast the growth and invest on that basis. What maybe takes more thinking is how to prepare the transport network for these new architectures. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's great. So, what, what, what are the, what's I guess some of the main things? Well, you've covered a couple of them, but what, what's the main takeaway for uh, service providers watching this if they're planning for the transport network to improve the transport network? Um, you know, for for their five uh, G. Sure. I mean, like I said, what gets us up in the morning is building really high performance network solutions. You know, I think that's paramount. So, you know, our customers look to Ericsson because we provide, you know, we have a great reputation for providing, you know, uh, systems that, that perform really well, some of the heaviest load mm -hmm. uh, deployments, you know, you can think of globally. So the transport implications of that are as effectively, if you think about it in terms of a chain, mm. the chain's only as strong as its weakest link. Right. And, uh, you can have all this investment in new spectrum and the best cell site locations, but if it's not backed with a high performance transport solution that's well integrated with the radio access network, 
then you're not going to achieve what you're looking for in 5G. So that's, I think, the key implication when you think about um, what does it mean from a transport perspective as, as 5G rolls out? Yeah, not to think about them in, in, in silos, but as one network, uh, and, and of course, focusing on the end customer. Uh, David, thanks so much for, again, for, for being here, and thanks to Ericsson for sponsoring this. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Much appreciated.